Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella and I'm very excited about today's video because Samsung just released the S22, the S22 Plus and the S22 Ultra. And in this video, I'm going to be unboxing the S22 Plus. I'll give you guys all of the details and also my first impressions of this new phone. And I'll also compare it to the previous generation S21 as well as the iPhone 13 Pro. And at the end, I'll be running some benchmarks and doing a camera comparison as well. Okay, so this is what the box looks Looks like this year. There's a big S out here on the front with the number 22 at the back and then also the words Galaxy S22 Plus on the side right here. And the color of this does match the S which does give away the color of the phone. So the one that I got right here is the pink gold one but there's also a white one, a black one, and a green one which is new this year and is pretty interesting. So let's just open this up. All right, so this is the S22 and there is nothing else in the box, no brick or anything. And actually the price of the S22 series stayed exactly the same as the S21s when they first launched, which is pretty nice. So at first glance, the design is very similar to the last gen S21's design. I love the S21's design and thought it looked really nice, but I kind of hope that there will be some more drastic changes in the design to, you know, just make it more exciting. But one major change that I noticed is that the back is now glass instead of plastic. I personally didn't mind the plastic back of the S21, but I do know that a lot of people didn't really like it. But nonetheless, I do like the upgraded glass back. I think it feels really nice. It doesn't seem like it tracks a lot of fingerprints. It feels very smooth, pretty similar to how the iPhone 13 Pro's back feels. The edge of the S22 Plus is aluminum and as for the pink color, so compared to the S21, the S22's pink color is more white leaning. I think I like the more saturated pink on the S21 more. And actually, I can't help but notice that it kind of looks like you just took the S21's design and the iPhone 13 Pro's design and combined them together to get the S22. I mean, the camera bump area looks exactly the same as as it did on the S21, but the glass back and also its texture is almost exactly the same as the iPhone 13 Pros. Also, the edge on the S22 is more squared out like how it is on the iPhone, and so it can kind of stand on its own. Okay, maybe not. The aluminum edge does cover the entire side of the S22, whereas it only covered more like half of the edge on the S21. And I do like this full coverage look more. And another small difference is that the power and the volume buttons are a bit wider too, which again is more similar to the iPhone's design. But yeah, overall, I do really like the new look and feel of the S22. It's very clean and elegant, kind of like an upgraded version of the S21 design. All right, and now let's peel off this front cover. Very satisfying and boot up the phone. The first time booting up a phone is always just very exciting. Now, I also have some phone cases to unbox thanks to the sponsor of this video, Taurus. So Taurus sent over their Guardian case for the S22, the Plus, and also the Ultra. This case is matte black, but still translucent, so you can see a bit of the S22's color underneath. It's made from polycarbonate material and is resistant to scratches and fingerprints. The edges are soft silicone, which ensures that you can hold the phone comfortably without it feeling slippery. The Guardian case is super slim and it fits the S22 like a glove. However, it's also very protective. It can withstand more than 3,000 drops and 26 angles from a height of eight feet with zero damage. There's also 360 degrees shockproof airbags built into this case with the latest 5.0 X-Shock tech that can effectively absorb any shocks up to 300 the Guardian case also has raised edges around the front and back camera bump area. So each Guardian case actually comes with two other color options for the buttons, green and orange. So you can easily swap out the default black buttons if you want a pop of color. Now, Taurus also offers the Mars Climber case for the S22 series. This case has a built-in kickstand that allows for three different angles of standing. It's also super slim fitting, has raised edges in the front and back camera area, and is very protective 
as well. Both the Guardian and the Mars Climber case fully support wireless charging and are available on Amazon and on the Taurus official website. You can click on the links down below to check them out. Okay, so I just finished setting up the phone and I also spent some time playing around with it. I did some benchmarks, also tested the battery life. And one update for the S22 and the Plus is that the refresh rate is now 10 hertz to 120 hertz, which is the same range as it is on the iPhone 13 Pro. However, I have seen some sources say that the LTPO screen is only on the S22 Ultra and not on the S22 or the Plus. And so that means that this phone screen is not as good for its battery life as the iPhone screen. But this increased range is better than the 60 to 120 hertz on the S21. However, as a user, you probably won't be seeing any difference compared to the previous generation when you're just scrolling around. So the batteries on the S22 and the Plus are actually slightly smaller than on the S21 and its Plus. But I think the battery life on the new S22s will be perfectly adequate since it does have the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip with the new four nanometer manufacturing process. I did do a brief battery test where I ran a benchmark for about 20 minutes on all three of these phones and they actually dropped by a very similar amount, so about 15%. But given that I do have the S22 Plus model with a bigger battery, it would seem that the new chip is drawing a bit more power. But as you can see on this graph right here, the new chip is quite a bit faster. And also the new phone doesn't overheat as quickly as the old S21. But of course I do have the Plus model here and so it isn't a direct comparison. But at least for this benchmark specifically, the iPhone pulled a way higher score than both of these phones. All right, and another thing that I'm excited about the S22 Plus specifically is the 45 watt fast charging. The regular S22 only has 25 watt fast charging like the previous generations. However, I have seen phones not charge at their marketed fast charge with even quality third-party bricks. And so I decided to test this out myself with a bunch of bricks that I have that are all rated for over 60 watts. And I found out that only some of them delivered 45 watts and others just deliver 25 watts. For example, my MacBook Pro brick. And which brick worked seemed pretty random. And so this kind of sucks because it seems like even if you already have a quality aftermarket brick that should be able to give it 45 watts, you might still have to buy the specific Samsung 45 watt brick just to be able to get the full charging speed. But other than that, the S22 and the Plus support 15 watt wireless charging and also has the power share feature. All right, and now let's talk about some of the physical features. So the S22 Plus has a 6.6 .6 inch full HD plus AMOLED display. There's not much of an upgrade here compared to the previous generation, but this is new for me because I have never used a phone this big before. Now, even though they have a glass back, both the S22 and the Plus weigh almost exactly the same as their S21 counterparts. This is somewhat shocking, but I am glad about this because I do like light phones and think they're more practical. They're easier to hold up while I'm just laying in bed or on the couch. All right, and some other miscellaneous features of the S22 Plus is that it has ultrasonic fingerprint and also IP68 water and dust resistance. The haptics on this phone does feel pretty good, very firm and solid. And also the speaker sounds pretty good too. I would say it's pretty similar to the speaker on the S21. And lastly, let's talk about the camera. So the S22 and the Plus actually have the same exact cameras and their telephoto lens did receive a big upgrade compared to last gen. It now has three times optical zoom compared to just 1.1 times before. And you can really see this in the photos. The S22s just looks much better than the S21s. It's much more detailed, cleaner with less noise. And that is especially apparent when you zoom into to this building right here. Now compared to the iPhone, which also has a three times optical zoom and a higher megapixel sensor. But I think the iPhone's photo is better in terms of technicality with less noise. It's also less of an over sharpened look, which you can really see when we zoom into these tree branches here. Now colors are subjective but the Samsung tends to produce more saturated and also more vibrant looking photos, whereas the iPhone's photos are more true to real life. And you can definitely see it in this example. And as for the main sensor, it is 23% larger than last gen and its photos also do look better cleaner and sharper, especially when you look at the clouds over here. So the bigger main camera sensor is supposed to help more in low light conditions. And I did take a few night mode shots. And I think with the help of night mode, the S22 and the S21's photos look 
very similar. So I would have to do more testing in different low light conditions to test this out. But the S22's 50 megapixel sensor doesn't seem to give it much more detail compared to the iPhone's 12 megapixel sensor. Of course, between iPhone and Samsung, it's a very different look in terms of the color, but I think the main sensor on the S22 and the 13 Pro are very close in terms of technicalities. And as for the ultra wide and the front selfie camera, I don't think they changed compared to last gen. And when comparing the S22's ultra wide photos to the iPhones, they capture a similar amount of detail, but the Samsung's does look a bit over sharpened. And neither nailed the white balance with the Samsung leaning more magenta and the iPhone leaning more green. And the selfies on the S22 and the 13 Pro look very, very similar. Even the processing of the colors and the saturation look almost identical. And lastly, I did play around with the 30 times mega zoom just to see how it is and they look pretty good. I think I might start using this more. So yeah, that's it for this preliminary camera test. Again, I will probably do a more comprehensive camera test in my upcoming full review. So make sure you subscribe for that. So even though this outer design seemingly didn't change much, in my initial testing, the S22 definitely seems like a very good and solid phone. It has better cameras and also improved performance. Also a more premium feeling chassis with this glass back. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I will certainly be making more content about the S22, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel and also have your notifications turned on so that you won't miss it when I upload my next video. Here are my other social media channels, so feel free to follow me on those if you would like to. And that's all that I have to say for this video. I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.